You join me today back at a familiar fishery from our videos, Forest Lane Fishery near York. And today I'm fishing on the Don Lake. See the lake behind me, it's really unique. It's got every peg's got its own features and every peg's a little bit different. And it lends itself perfectly to a method feeder approach. It's full of carp from two pound, well in excess of 20 pound. And using the method feeder, you can target these fish really easily in different ways. So today I'm gonna to run through all of my method feeder approach, what bait I choose, why I choose that bait, where in my peg I'm gonna fish, how I'm gonna feed, how I'm gonna load the feeder, and what I'm gonna fish on the hook. Hopefully I can pass on a few hints and tricks that are gonna help you along your way to catch more fish. As you can see by the state of me, I've already had a few casts, I've already caught some fish, and it's sure to be a great day. So I can't wait to get fishing again. I'll go and get fishing, get started, and I'll run you through exactly what I'm doing with my approach. Like I said, this lake lends itself perfectly to the method feeder approach. The first thing you've got to do is decide exactly where you're going to fish. There's an obvious option on this peg, I've got an island to cast to. Now early on in your session, the island's always a good choice. Fish naturally live around it, they want to swim around the island, and by fishing there in the shallow water, you're always going to get bites straight away to get your session off to a good start. The first place I'm going to look is to fish to the island and then the next thing you need to do is pick your spot where you're going to fish. So looking along the island there's all this cover, loads of places you could maybe choose to cast your feeder but what I want to do is find the area I can get closest to the bank. And that's going to put me in shallower water, it's going to put me in amongst all the cover and it's going to get me tight to the bank where it's probably undercut and the fish are naturally wanting to be in there to feel safe. So if you look along the bank here, oh, looks like we've got one on. If you look along the bank here and you can maybe see that where the fish have just spooked where I hooked that one. There's sort of some reeds and then there's a tree then there's a bit of bare mud bank where you can actually see a little bit of an undercut on the bank and then we come back to some more solid reeds. So that for me is screaming out to cast my feeder there. I can get it closest to the bank there. I don't have to worry about casting in any snags. I can get my feeder where I want it and where the fish are naturally going to want to feed. So that's the first thing I'm looking for. Where's the place where I can get closest to the bank? Now luckily today it's quite a big gap. Other days the gap becomes smaller, a little bit harder to cast in. It's a lovely fish. Just look, get him in the net. It's a small carp, but it's probably a perfect example of the fish that tend to live around the islands. You can see that's maybe three pound and the fish you tend to catch next to the islands are a little bit smaller than them that you might catch in the open water, maybe on a short pole, maybe down the edge. But there tends to be lots of them. And what that does is bring me on to bait choice. So bait wise, there's obviously options to put around your feeder. You can put micro pellets around it. Four mil pellets are very popular these days. Lots of people are using them. But fishing up to an island, I always think ground bait is the best bait. Lots of really small particles means that there's loads of attraction to draw the fish in. I get the fish to come into that shallow water and there's not a lot really for them to eat other than my hook bait, meaning I can often get a really quick bite. And ground bait also lends itself to them smaller stamp carp, like that one that I've just caught that you catch up against the island. Let's just get this back out, show you where I'm casting, where I tried to explain. So just nicely in that gap again, right next to that mud bank that I'm on about. And we know we're in the shallow water, we're closest to the island. Like I was saying, the fish around the island are generally smaller and they lend themselves to ground bait. The ground bait's drawing them into the shallow water, it's attractive to the size of the fish I'm catching. And that's always my go-to bait when I'm fishing up to an island for carp or for F1s. Sometimes I'll add some pellets to it, it's quite rare that I'll fish with just pellets around the feeder. I'm always going to have a percentage of ground bait in that shallow water, like I said, for that attraction to draw them in. Then it's a case of building your peg up. Now I could do that loose feeding bait with a catapult, but the last thing I want is bait getting stuck in the reeds on the bank and encourage the fish to come off the bottom 
and start sucking the bait off the grass. By feeding just with my feeder, I'm making sure all my bait's going to the bottom, I'm keeping the fish down there, they're coming down to my pile of bait and I can get a nice quick bite, fish are feeding where I want them to feed. But mixing your ground bait correctly is really, really important. If you have a look on our YouTube channel, go through the how-to guides. There's some guides on there on how to mix ground bait. That'll show you exactly the way to go about it. And then choosing your mix again, equally important. Today I've gone for a mix of Sonia Bates Match Method Mix and Thatcher's, both in the green colour. And I think if you're a little bit unsure with colours, you can never go wrong with green on a commercial fishery. The idea is that you want to mix the ground bait so it goes on your feeder rock hard. It can take the impact of the feeder in the water but then it's going to break down reasonably quickly. So you need to mix it a little bit on the dry side, squeeze it onto your feeder hard, and it should take that impact and your bait should break up. But anything really pellety based will probably do the job that you're looking for. Now again, it comes to hook baits then. Choose them what to put on the hook. There's all sorts you can use. For me, this type of fishing, ground bait around your feeder, small carp up to an island, I'm going to be looking at probably fishing maggots on the hook. Really easy bait for the fish to suck in. Fish that live round islands, I'd have expected to have a bite by now, so I'm just going to have a recast. But fish that live round islands tend to be used to be feeding on a hard bottom, gravelly type of bottom. And you tend to find they have much smaller, much harder mouths. And for that reason, maggots work really well up to an island. It means that the fish can suck them in really easy, even with that smaller mouth that you'll find a lot of them have suck it in nice and easy it's nice and light doesn't mask the hook too much and helps you land loads more fish so when it comes to casting it's all about regularity with this type of fishing keep it going in in the same spot keep the feeder going in keep building your peg and of course when you're doing that you don't want too big a feeder so size wise I've gone for the smallest in the FXT feeders. That small feeder still holds enough bait to catch me a fish, but I'm not going to overdo it when I'm casting regularly and trying to build my peg up. I can be casting maybe every 90 seconds, two minutes, you find a lot of your bites come really quickly after the feeder goes in. Almost like the fish home straight in on the feeder, come straight to it and pick your hook bait up. Obviously ground bait breaks down quick, fish can pick that hook bait up and you get a nice quick bite. So that small feed is perfect for building the peg up. Bigger feeder can introduce a little bit too much bait. You find that you can't cast quite as regular. You'd go through loads and loads of bait, probably put a little bit too much in your peg and not get the effect that you're looking for when you're trying to build the peg up. That small feeder I combine with a four inch hook length, 019 FXT rig line, nice and strong, nice and durable. There's a few snags about, nothing the fish can actually get me in, but they can run through grass, they can run through reeds and can possibly cut your hook length off, so you want something that's not going to let you down. Then to finish my rig off, a size 14, 404 eyed hook. Two or three maggots on the hook, and then when I come to fishing other baits, I've obviously got the option to band them and hair rig them. But my go-to bait for most of my fishing is going to be them two or three maggots hooked straight on. Now while this line's really good, there's other areas of your peg that you can exploit with a method feeder by fishing it in a different way. And that area for me is going to be in the open water of my peg, which is something I'll run through with you in just a little while.
One thing a lot of people struggle with is casting tight to islands and not getting snagged up. How do you go about doing it? Well, you've obviously got to clip up to make sure your feeder doesn't travel too far. And how you go about clipping up is exactly what I'm going to run through now and show you exactly how to do it. So first up, I've taken my hook length off my feeder. Really, really important. The last thing you want to do is cast on the island, have your hook length on, get snagged up and be having to reset up. If you take your hook length off, it just lessens the chance of you catching up if you do hook anything. So the first thing I need to do, make my first cast. I'm going to have to stop the line with my finger, let my feeder go in the water and hopefully I'm going to land it about two metres short. So make that first cast, rod up, stop it. It was a little bit closer than two metres to be honest there. A little bit closer than I'd probably aim for, but I think I'm about a metre off at the minute. So I've got my line trapped still, I've never let go of it from when I stopped my feeder. I'm just going to pull a little bit off, probably no more than 18 inches. And just put that back behind my clip. So I'm going to wind in, now when I stop my feeder, I don't need to use my finger, the clip's going to do the job for me, so I'm just going to pull the rod back as the feeder hits the clip and stop the feeder and hopefully I'll be a little bit closer to the bank. There, and you can see a little bit closer than I was last time, this time maybe 18 inches off. Take a little bit more line again from behind the clip, that's probably the distance I was off the island, and hopefully this one should put me tight to the bank. So one more cast now, exactly the same process, make my cast, stop the feeder, and you can see that's still really not quite as tight as I want it, that's probably this far away, I want to be a little bit tighter than that, I could adjust that now, but what you'll find is when you put some bait on your feeder it's a little bit heavier, it'll just travel a little bit further. So I've got some ground bait here, I'm just going to demonstrate that now, I'll put my bait on cast out again to show you and that's the reason initially I would never ever clip up as tight as I want to fish. You can adjust that in your first few casts once you've got some bait on the feeder and see where you end up. So I'll put my bait on, make another cast and you can see that was right in the bank really really tight. Now last cast I was this far off once I've added the extra weight of my bait on the feeder, I'm really tight. You can actually see a fish moving now right on top of where I've just cast. So by leaving it a little bit short on your last cast when you've clipped up, you're allowing for the weight of your, your bait on your feeder. It goes really tight to the island. If it's still not quite right, then you can adjust that last little bit as you're fishing. But it means you're going to end up not hooking the island and getting yourself nice and close every single time. So we've had a brilliant day catching carp across to the island. But what I want to... Oh, that one's come off. What I want to do now is just run through that open water line. So since the start of the day, I've been loose feeding pellets at sort of 14, 16 metres in the open water with the aim to chuck a method feeder on it later on. And like I spoke about earlier, the fish up to the islands are generally a lot smaller. And what I'm expecting to happen on this line is the fish to be a much bigger stamp, might not get quite as many bites, but it's a brilliant way to end your session. So this time I've got pellets around my feeder, I've got pellets on the hook and I'm just going to underarm it in where I've been loose feeding those pellets. Just get them pellets on nice and firm so I know they're not going to come off and then pick that area where I've been loose feeding my pellets and just plop my feeder over it. Now while the other line's all about building your peg up, constantly casting, getting lots of bait in your peg and drawing the fish in, this line's a little bit more about patience. So I'm gonna get my bait in, get everything set, and I'm gonna to look to start loose feeding again. One thing I always like to do is just give it a minute or so after I've cast in, let my feeder break down before I loose feed my pellets. Because one thing you do find on this line when it's really good, a lot of your bites come as soon as your bait hits the water. The last thing I wanna do is cast my feeder in, fire bait straight over the top of it before my feed has had a chance to break down and I can get a bite. So now I've cast it in, my bait's broke down and I can pick some pellets up and loose feed them over that area. So I'm just going to feed a couple of times, try and keep them in a nice tight area where your feed has gone. And then I'm just going to leave it for maybe two, three, four minutes and then I'll look to feed again. 
and you'll find as the peg gets stronger and there's more and more fish there quite often you'll cast your feeder in give it that 30 seconds to a minute to break down fire your pellets in two or three times and the rod will go off the rest and you'll see there'll be totally different fish but rather than sitting and recasting every two or three minutes like i'm across to the island i'm probably going to leave that in more like eight or ten minutes fish are going to be much bigger hopefully i'll get one quicker than that if i don't i'm I'm more than happy to wait sort of eight or ten minutes for a fish that could be double figures or bigger and there we go and there we go that didn't take too long at all and I'm willing to bet it's probably going to be a bigger fish obviously they're not every time but a big percentage of them will be and that's why I'm happy to leave it in that little bit longer and now it's just a case of sitting on it, keep feeding that bait, and just figure out how much to feed. And at the minute, I'm thinking there's a lot of fish moving about. It's not a really big one, but it's definitely bigger than lemons against the island. At the minute, there's a lot of fish moving about on the surface, and all that makes me think is it might be time to feed a little bit more aggressively, try and force the fish to go down to the bottom where my feeder is, and I can catch them nice and easily. But you see, it's a much bigger fish, six or seven pound compared to the sort of two to four pounders against the island. And you can draw loads and loads of fish in your peg like this, but because you're fishing a feeder over the top of it, you really don't need to worry about foul hooking them and losing fish. So it's a really efficient way of catching lots of fish in a short amount of time and a much bigger stamp of fish. So now I'm just going to repeat that process again. Put a pellet in my band. Fill my feeder and then just underarm it back out on that line. And then one other thing I just want to quickly touch on is how you load your method feeder. And that's something that I think makes a massive difference and you need to load it in different ways dependent on what you're trying to achieve. So let's chuck that back out. get the line sunk and put it down on the rest and then we'll let that feeder break down again give it that sort of 30 40 seconds and I'm just gonna fire some bait over the top of it and hopefully I might get a quick reaction but I'm gonna feed a little bit more this time I'm gonna nearly fill my pouch like I said there's a lot of fish on the surface I want to try and get them to go to the bottom I'm just gonna do that a couple of times and then I can wait for my bite. Now, while I'm waiting for that bite, one thing I just want to touch up on, and we'll show you it in video exactly how I'm doing it, but I just want to show you how I go about loading my method feeder. So first of all, when I'm fishing to the island, I'm casting really regular. When I get my feeder in, I want it to be fishing as quick as I possibly can. So like I spoke about earlier with the ground bait, you want it to get to the bottom in one pile, and break down nice and quickly. The first thing I want is my hook bait to be visible straight away. I want to get a bite as soon as I chuck it in, if there's a fish coming straight to my feeder. So when I load my feeder up, I'll put a small amount of ground bait in the bottom of the mould, just enough to cover the bottom of the mould, place my hook bait in, fill it with ground bait, piled up as high as I can, get as much crammed on there as I can get on, and then I'll force my feeder into it, into it and that's my feeder loaded up with my hook bait right near the top of the pile, meaning it's available to a fish as soon as I cast in. Now on this line where I'm casting now in the open water when I'm wanting to set a trap for a bigger fish I might be leaving the bait in a bit longer and pellets do tend to break down a little bit quicker than ground bait on your feeder I'm going to do the total opposite so I'm going to probably three quarters fill my method mould up oh I thought we had one then I'm going to three quarters fill my method mould up place my pellet on top and then fill the rest of the mould and compress my feeder into that and what that means is that when my bait breaks down if my pellet was at the top of my pile of pellets, it'll often fall away from the pile of bait and not be left positioned exactly where I want it to create the perfect trap, which is what I'm looking to do. By putting the hook pellet further down the ball of bait, it means the pellets on the top can break down, leave a really neat pile of bait, and my hook bait is at the bottom of it, which ends up the center of that pile of bait, creating the perfect trap to catch a carp. So by doing that, either way, for the two different lines, you're doing it tailored to what you're trying to achieve. Across to the island, you're wanting to catch a fish really quick, release your hook bait fast. In the open water, you're trying to create the perfect trap to just present over a lot of loose fed bait. They can leave in confident that a fish is going to hoover it up along with the rest of the offerings on your feeder. 
And that's really, really important to me. Make sure you're presenting your bait in the correct way to catch a fish. And there we go. Just as we finish talking about that, we've had another bite. And you can see his fish spooked everywhere there. That shows you exactly how many fish I'm drawing in my peg. Waited a little bit longer than perhaps I might have done on the feeder across to the island, but again, hopefully the bigger fish. And as the peg builds up, I'll cast in, loose feed them pellets over the top, and when it gets really good, hopefully it'll hit the water and the rod straight off the rest. But it's a really easy way to fish later on in your session and really easy to build it up while they sat fishing across to the island. That looks like another decent fish. But in this lake, there's every chance the next one could be 15, 20 pounds. There's loads and loads of really big fish in here. And this is probably one of the best ways to catch them. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Probably another one, maybe eight pound that one, seven to eight pound. And that's probably worth two or three of the fish from against the island. So I waited a little bit longer, but probably not as long as it took me to catch maybe three fish over to the island. And it's just a brilliant way to either finish your, your pleasure session off with some big fish, or perhaps end the match boosting your weight by catching some big fish to top up your weight really quickly. Well, that's been an absolutely fantastic session at Forest Lane on the Don Lake, catching loads and loads of carp. I've caught some chucking over to the island, those smaller carp that I caught early on, and then when I've chucked it in down the middle over my loose feed, I've caught some really big carp to finish the day off nicely. Hopefully it showed just how successful a one rod approach can be on commercial venues like this and I hope you've picked up a thing or two along the way. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all our other videos and I'll see you again on the bank very soon.